Hey guys, you're here with Upwards, and today I've invited my friend, the programming juvenile, to give the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro a little spin. The programming juvenile is a game developer here in New Zealand. He's got a YouTube channel that you should check out with over 18,000 views, and several game devlogs, tutorials, and more. He also has a game out on Steam right now that I actually made the soundtrack for called Lone Wolf World War II. It's a super cool game and I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. Today's video will be taking a look at how the M1 Pro chip handles game development with applications such as Blender, Unreal Engine and Unity. We'll be testing out how far the M1 Pro chip can be taken in each application, how it compares to the M1 MacBook Pros and the heat and fan noise produced. We'll also document any issues we run into, the time it takes for things to run and how well the laptop operates under pressure. The MacBook Pros we will be testing is the new 14-inch MacBook Pro base model. This has the M1 Pro chip with 8 CPU cores, 14 GPU cores, along with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. The other MacBook Pro we have here is the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro. This has the M1 chip with 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores, along with 8GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. Before we start, I just wanted to mention that we are screen recording a lot of these projects running which may make a negative impact to overall performance and it's safe to say that you can expect slightly higher performance than what is being shown in this review. First up, we have Blender and we're loading and testing a few different projects. The first one is called Red Autumn Forest. Moving around the scene is pretty smooth. This isn't really the heaviest project to run and running the scene is also no problem. You can see there is a slight difference with the M1 chip running at a lower FPS but it's still overall smooth. Rendering a scene takes 8 seconds which is a really quick time. Compared to the M1 MacBook Pro, it's 7 seconds faster. So about half the time to render the scene on the M1 Pro MacBook. The second project is called Splash Fox. This one is a slightly heavier project but it's still running smooth. Moving around the scene is no problem and playing the scene runs well. Rendering a scene takes 28 seconds which is pretty quick as well. On the M1 MacBook Pro, it took 44 seconds. About 1.5 times faster on the M1 Pro MacBook. The third project is called Party Tub. This is similar to the Splash Fox scene, but moving around the project is a struggle for both machines. It is a little smoother on the 14 inch, but they are both quite jerky. Rendering a scene takes 28 seconds like the Splash Fox. The M1 MacBook took 33 seconds, which is pretty interesting. So far, this is the closest time between the two laptops. The last project we're going to test is called Sinosaur to Brex. This project is the heaviest of the projects we've tested so far. Moving around is smooth, but rendering a scene took 2 minutes on the M1 Pro chip, the longest so far. Unfortunately, my camera stopped recording the M1 MacBook Pro, but it took around 3 minutes and 30 seconds. In Blender, it's safe to say that the 14 inch base motor MacBook Pro is great. Throughout the different projects we've tested, everything has been running smoothly and we've been getting very good render times, even in heavier projects like Party Tug. Heat and fan noise has also been very minimal which is very helpful. Compared to the M1 MacBook Pro, there is a distinctive difference in render times and in moving around within intensive scenes. Not so much in the lighter scenes, which shows the advantage and improvement of the 14 inch MacBook Pro in heavier workloads. However, these differences won't really affect most game developers but rather 3D digital artists. You will want to consider this when choosing between the M1 MacBook Pro and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Next up, we are testing in Unity. At first, we tried several huge demo projects from Unity's website, but none of them worked, which was really frustrating. No matter what we did, changing editor versions, reinstalling, and waiting for really long periods of time, we could not get any of them to work. We would load the project, try to run it, and end up with several failed compiler issues. So we went back to the 2021 editor and used the demo project from here. Turns out they were a lot better and we could run and benchmark a few different things. The first demo project is a 3D scene which showcases some relatively light and heavy scenes. We have a consistent FPS of 30 at QHD resolution. The second demo project is another 3D scene which showcases heavier and more detailed scenes which really push the M1 Pro chip to its limits. At QHD, the FPS is at 30 and at free aspect, the FPS is at 60. At this stage, the fan noise and heat output has started to really ramp up and is quite audible. On the M1 MacBook Pro, we have quite a big difference in FPS. At QHD, we're getting a steady FPS of 17 and on free aspect, we're hitting 40 FPS. Funnily enough, the 
fan is barely audible and the heat output isn't as much as the M1 Pro MacBook. Building the project, the M1 Pro MacBook took 5 minutes and 25 seconds, and the M1 MacBook Pro took 9 minutes and 37 seconds, which is about double the speed with the M1 Pro chip in building the scene when compared to the M1 chip. The third demo project is a 2D game. Most MacBooks handle this very well and we're getting a very nice frame rate. Building this project for some reason was quicker on the M1 MacBook Pro, but this could be just an outlier as we did not test it again. Keep in mind that you can change the resolution to get better frame rates, which is another factor you might want to keep in mind when deciding between the M1 and M1 Pro chip. In conclusion with Unity, the M1 Pro MacBook does have a distinctive advantage over the M1 MacBook Pro, especially with the amount of frames per second. However, as I mentioned at the beginning of this section, we had a lot of issues trying to run the demo projects on Unity's website. This does show that all project packages and editors for Intel-based processors aren't a good idea to run on these new M-series chips. But in what does work, we can see the M1 Pro chip's capabilities really shine. You can edit and run big projects really well when it's supported. In this section, we're testing Unreal Engine 5, Epic's latest game engine which is still in beta, but works on Apple Silicon MacBooks. Since this is going to be one of the biggest improvements in the game development world, we decided to test it out. Like our testing in Unity, we went for a couple 3D projects that we thought would be good for benchmarking. The first one is a Photo Studio car model. After loading all the assets into the editor, we can see a decent frame rate when we run through the scene. Everything runs smooth and looks great. While compiling the shaders, both MacBooks experience a lot of heat and fan noise, but it doesn't seem to affect performance, which is great. The second project we tested was an architecture scene. We didn't have enough time to wait for the shaders to compile, but moving around and running the scene had no problems, which seems very promising. We wanted to test out the value of the ancient demo to test out some of the technology Epic was talking about, but unfortunately it's Windows only so that's out of the question. It would have been really interesting to see how the M1 Pro MacBook would handle it as the minimum requirements needed a 12 core CPU, 32GB of RAM and a GTX 1080 GPU. In conclusion, game development on the M1 MacBooks is at a level that is suitable for most game developers. Throughout our review, the M1 Pro MacBook showed its capabilities, running most projects at a higher resolution and frame rate than the M1 MacBook Pro, along with quicker render and build times. Not to say that the M1 MacBook Pro is bad. In fact, it showed great performance across all our tests. Both laptops perform well with very little fan noise and heat, apart from compiling shaders. If all you wanted to make was 2D games, even the MacBook Air would be a great option. But as soon as you get into 3D and shaders, you'll need something with a fan. Compatibility is still an issue that will be around for a while. As we showed throughout the video, we had several issues trying to run demo projects before 2021 and ran into issues with compilers, especially in Unity. I hope you enjoyed this review on how the 14-inch MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Pro handle game development. Make sure you check out the programming juvenile. This video wouldn't be possible without him, and check out this video to see what a musician thinks of the 14-inch MacBook Pro.